Why is this alpha useful for? To define the degree of hardening of the material. I told you that the hardening of the material is related to the capacity of the material to increase the elastic limit beyond the elastic regime. So we know that that material at this el initial elastic regime has this elastic limit, but when it's here, if we unload and reload, the plastic limit has increased to that new value that we call flow or yell stress. Yell to stress, that means that for this material, once it has been loaded and unloaded and dispatched to some way, and then it's used again, it's, load, it's loaded, then the behavior will be elastic until arriving to some yell to stress. Beyond that later yell to stress, the elastic incremental regime ends up and it continues an incrementally plastic regime. So the way to characterize this yield stress is through this hardening variable and through this formula. We said that the yield stress is equal to the elastic limit, to the first yield stress, which is the elastic limit, plus one constant, which is called the hardening modulus. Look, another properties, hardening modulus, denoted by H prime times the hardening variable. Look that this diagram, since the hardening value is always positive, and this always positive only has sense in this part of the diagram. So it represented, this, this is a straight curve, like that. It says that as we are moving, for instance, for when we are at this, um, at this branch here, how much is the elastic strain here? The plastic strain, sorry. How much is the plastic strain in the first elastic branch? How much? Can you say? Zero. So according to that, how much is alpha in this part here? Zero. And uh, what returns these equations for alpha equals zero? That the yell stress is sigma e. So when we are here, the yell stress is always the elastic limit for the virgin material. But when we start moving in that way, of course, we, are st we start generating plastic strain. And we start generating plastic strain, according to this equation, we generate also alpha, so alpha increases. So if alpha increases, that means that the yell stress, sigma f, increases too, according to this formula. Okay? Look, H prime is called the hardening modulus. Why? What happens if H prime is zero? How is this, this, this curve, the slope of this curve? Horizontal. How is this curve? Zero. So sigma f is always sigma e. So what is this curve then? It's horizontal. You see? So h prime being equal to zero, by the way, that's called perfect plasticity, which is, by the way, the one that you are familiar with, perfect plasticity, which is a strong simplification. For perfect plasticity, there is no hardening this h prime is equal to zero, then this curve is horizontal, and then this curve is horizontal, and then the material can never overcome the yield stress, the elastic limit, okay? The larger is h prime, the larger is h prime, the larger is the hardening. The larger is the hardening, you know? The larger is the hardening. So if that, h, if that slope is very, is very, is very high, that means that we, we gain yield stress rapidly with plastic deformation. So that means that this, this curve, this uh, line, also has a higher slope. I don't mean that this slope is that slow, it's not the same. Because the here is epsilon and here is alpha. But I mean that the higher is the hardening parameter or hardening modulus, the higher is this slope, and the higher is the hardening of the material. So look that alpha as a variable and h prime as a parameter property characterizes the level of hardening of the material, the capacity of the material to increase strength when we produce plastic strain. Okay? That is the role of that. So this curve, 
which by the way can be generalized. So if we wanted to do this curve in terms instead of in a straight line, we would like to make a curve line, then we will think here a curve line too. So that's a way, I mean modifying this, this, this uh, uh, hardening law, we can just modify the shape of the uh, elastoplastic branch. Well, <coughs> next stage. We have defined now, look, what parameters we have so far. Young modulus, okay? Young modulus that characterize the elastic branch. The elastic uh, limit, okay? Elastic limits in my it, that, that is the flow, the yield stress for the virgin material. And then we have this parameter H prime, third parameter, which is a hardening parameter, which provides the elastic limit or the yield stress for the non-virgin material. Okay? For the material that has been maybe loaded and unloaded. Okay? It's what provides the yield stress for the material coming from this branch. Okay? Okay, now let's define something else. That I insist that this is this part is more devised for generalization to 3D cases than for specific 1D cases. For 1D cases, that could be maybe simplified. But let's keep the format. We define a function, which is a function, an, a scalar function, a scalar function of the stress and alpha. Alpha, I recall you, is the hardening, the hardening variable, which is a measure of the level of the plasticity that the material has achieved historically, right? And we define this formula, F signal, for uniaxial cases. We define this function in that specific way. F of sigma alpha is defined as the modulus of sigma, the modulus of sigma, minus the yield stress, which depends on alpha. The yield stress depends on alpha. Right? So minus the yield stress. And now we are postulated something. Whenever the stress value and the hardening variable value is such that replace here returns a negative number, this characterizes the material being elastic, incrementally elastic. Whenever when we replace the stress and alpha into here and the return is zero, we say that the material is in elastoplastic regime. And we never, we never allow this function being greater than zero. That is our, I mean, abstract uh, ingredient, okay? Let's do some interpretation for that. What happens when f is smaller than zero? That means that the stress is smaller than the yellow stress, right? The modulus of the stress is smaller than the yellow stress. What does that mean? What happens here? How much is the stress? That. How much is the yellow stress? That. So the yield stress minus the, I'm sorry, the, the stress minus the yield stress is negative. So that says that the material is, an, so to speak, an elastic branch. Okay? Here, what happened here to the stress? The stress is sigma. What is the yellow stress here? Sigma E. So what is sigma minus sigma E? Negative. So the material is in the elastic branch, okay? So what happens when we are here? How much is the stress? Sigma. How much is the yield stress? Sigma. So sigma minus the yield stress is zero. So this means a point in which the material is going to change its behavior. It's going to pass from elastic to inelastic, to plastic, okay? But look, is it possible for a point the stress being greater than the yellow stress? For instance, what does that mean? For that point, for that point, what is the yellow stress of this point? That point. That point, that the, fun the yellow function being greater than zero would mean that the stress is greater than the yellow stress. And this never happens. Okay? Because we say that after that, the material is not going to go that way, but it's going to go that way. 
And in this branch, in the elastoplastic branch, the stress is equal to the yellow stress. So, so sorry, the yell function is zero. In other words, look, the yell function is smaller than zero in the, uh, in the uh, elastic branches. Even the initial elastic branch and all the loading branches, right? In all this, whenever we are in a loading branch, so that means that the material is behaving incrementally, elastically, that is indicated by the yell function being smaller than zero. When the material is just on the, elastic, on the, on the uh, plastic branch, or the elastoplastic branch, then the yell function, the difference of that minus that, is exactly zero. And that indicates that the material is in such a situation that if we go that way, we are going to move that curve. But if we unload and go that way, we are going to behave incrementally elastic. So that is like a traffic light that says, well, depending on the color, you are going to move that way, you are going to be this, or you're going to be that. And if the color is that, then take care, because you have to distinguish if you are going to unload or you're going to load. 